All right, gang, time to start working on our pick guard. We got a lot of work to do here. Gonna put some copper foil shielding tape on here. We gotta mount some pots. We gotta put a switch in. We gotta put in some pickups. Gotta drill a hole. A lot to do. Let's get rocking and rolling. Let's get started right now. <laughs> Okay, we have a lot of work to do here, but I think the first thing we're going to do is drill this extra hole to replace the one that we cut out when we took that tip off of this pick guard. And we got to put some foil shielding tape on here, put in the electronics, lots of things to do, but I think we're going to start with this hole and get that out of the way. Okay, to do this drilling project of course we need a drill. I'm going to start with some smaller bits and work my way up. This one's about an eighth of an inch. That's the whole size more or less of the holes for the pick guard screws. So I'm going to start with a real tiny one here and drill a pilot hole. As far as measuring this, I took some measurements with my caliper. Uh, this hole is about 5.5, 5.6 millimeters from the edge. So if I take that same distance from this edge, that's going to put me in about a little more than an eighth of an inch from the edge here. So I think we'll be good. So line the drill up. That's two. That's three. This is the eighth inch hole. All right, that lined up pretty nice. Now when you look at this, these holes look considerably bigger than this. And that is simply because these are countersunk a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is, Mr. Unprepared here, I have these awesome countersink bits. These are good for wood, metal, just about anything. Make sure I have the right size drill bit. What this is going to do is drill our hole, or widen our hole a little bit, hopefully. I'm going to do this gingerly, don't want to do too much at a time. to be enough to hold the screw head in there flush or at least let it countersink a little bit. Now I left the plastic coating on here. That looks pretty good. I don't think I want to go too much more effect. I think that looks fairly good. And I did come pretty close to the top up here. Okay, next thing I want to do is put a little more shielding on this. And this, this pick guard comes, these depends on what manufacturer you get these from. Come with different 
uh, patterns, different varying thicknesses, quality of the shielding. The shielding on here right now, uh, I think leaves a lot to be desired. So, what we're going to do is have this copper foil shielding tape. I bought it in the one inch size rather than the big wide stuff. Sometimes I regret that decision and then other times I I feel it was a good decision but I do think that it is a good idea to put a little bit more on here than is already there just for good measure second thought I decided just to shield this part I'm not going to I'm not going to put that tape around here because it's really it's really not necessary this is where the controls are going to be so this is where I'm going to put it now as far as these holes go I just poke those holes through And get our knife here and you can use anything to poke these through. Pencil, pen, drill bit, whatever you want or have. If there's any excess that comes through, you can pretty much kind of carve it off with your fingernail. Whole thing is you're gonna have you're gonna have pieces coming up through here anyway. So there we go. Okay, just ran into my first snag for this video. If you've been following this build, you know that there's been a snag in every video. Uh, 
what the problem is is I got these Borns 500k audio pots to use here and since this pick guard came from China they do not fit through the holes if you've ever bought a guitar kit uh, especially a Chinese made one you'll find that they come with really small pots I have one around here somewhere but I'm I'm not going to dig it out right now. But these are made to fit smaller pots. But I have the solution drill a bigger hole. So I find the first drill bit does not go smoothly through this hole. And I'm going to widen these holes. Bingo. That's the one. All right. And that is three eighths. Well, that was easy enough. All right, three eighths it is. <clears throat> All right, got our holes drilled for our pots. Now you may be wondering why am I not drilling this third hole? Well, that's because that's a secret and <clears throat> Right now, I only need those two. Now these are Alexander Prebora pickups. Alexander Prebora <clears throat> hand makes these pickups in Russia. Uh, they're available on his website, which is ProboraPickups.com, which I'll put a link in for, and they're also available on eBay. And if you watch uh, on eBay occasionally, uh, actually quite regularly, he runs sales on them. So you can get them a little bit cheaper than they are. It does take a while for them to arrive because they do come from Russia. Now this is the <coughs> Voodoo set for single coil Stratocaster setup. Uh, gives you a wiring diagram here and everything. Uh, these are handmade. Each one's marked. Neck. Middle. Bridge. You know, all his name stamped in there. So uh, don't be fooled by imitations. These are hand wound, wax dipped. Now you can get them with different color covers, but I got them without covers. Uh, they also have uh, really nice quality pushback wire. <clears throat> now I got them without covers because uh, they come in red, white, or cream. I mean, I'm sorry, black, white, or cream. And I wanted red. So I got red covers to go with our red pick guard. And the only thing is you have to be careful with these. Uh, when you buy pickup covers like this, you need to check two things. You need to check what the distance is between your magnets on the pickup and you need to check what the distance is between the holes on the pickup cover because you can get cheap sets of these on Amazon or eBay or wherever <clears throat> and when you get them they might be three different sizes. They might be 48, 49, 50 whatever 
I can't think of all the combinations off the top of my head, but all of these Alexander Prabora pickups are, uh, they are five millimeters in between. pickup poles. I don't know if you can see that. And I made sure when I ordered these they were five millimeters between. So actually I have to take these screws out of here in order to mount these. So here's the neck pickup. Take the screws out. Let's just see. If they fit. And lo and behold, lo and behold, they fit. All right. So, this guy's going to go in here. Hopefully, they fit in my pick guard. And they do. Let's do another one. This bridge pickup. And finally, let's do the middle. Yeah, these are waxed up. There's some wax residue on there. Maybe that fits like a glove. And they do fit. And that, okay, that's what's going on. But that is what she's going to look like. I wanted red pick pickup covers to go with my red pick guard. All right, so we're good to go on that. All right, folks, I think it's been about a week since I did any video for our Jagged Caster build because I ran into a couple of snags. First of all, I didn't have a bit big enough to drill one hole. So I had to round one of those up, which I did. Got the hole drilled. Now my holes for my pots and my other secret ingredient are in there. And then we're ready to... Uh, mount all the hardware on here prior to soldering but otherwise I ran into a snag and I was doing a video of this at the time uh, when I did the hardtail on here I forgot one very important thing and that was to run a ground wire for the bridge. So we filled that cavity where the ground wire hole was, the original ground wire holes right there, which would go in there into the tremolo cavity and could be soldered onto the tremolo claw or attached to one of the screws or however you like to do it. But since I filled all that in, had no ground wire. So I took the bridge off, <laughs> drilled the hole, and uh, unfortunately, I, my hole uh, actually went through the body. <laughs> I'm going to laugh about it now. I wasn't laughing at the time, which is why I don't have video of this. Uh, I drilled a hole through the body. Actually, through the piece we put on here. So I had to patch it, fill it. Uh, this is about the fifth coat of clear poly on here and uh, it's still drying so before I put the bridge back on what we'll do is take this and uh, expose the wire on the end of this spread it out nicely and flatten it out on here and we mount the bridge on top so that the wire 
ground wire connects with the bottom of the bridge and uh, then this will get soldered onto one of the uh, pots as ground. So that's what I've been doing in the meantime. But it turned out pretty well. It's, uh, it's not perfect, but so far nothing about this guitar has come out perfectly. So. Nonetheless, what I'm going to do is finish this pick guard up and get it ready for soldering. And then in the next video, we will fill in those cavities, open spaces with some shielding tape. For, uh, fillet that wire out, reattach the bridge, and then uh, we'll do all the soldering of the pickups and the pots and the Oak Grigsby switch I have to go on here. But for now, I'm gonna get these things mounted Get that pick guard ready to solder. Okay, depending on the the guitar setup, what particular type of guitar and how the pickups mount and everything depends on how I choose to do the wiring. Uh, for my Les Paul style guitar, I made a template and I put all the pots in the template, soldered them on there, then took it out and set it in the guitar. For this one, I am going to uh, mount all the hardware and then I'm going to do the soldering after the hardware is already mounted. With these pickups came an installation chart, but it also gives you the tone chart with the output of these, depending on what particular one you got. Red and white, traditional, blues classic, blues telly, cream telly, hot custom, bridge, hot custom neck. Mine are the Voodoo. So for the Voodoo, the neck pickup is 6.2K, middle pickup 6.2K, and the bridge pickup 6.6K. So they're not super hot pickups, but I, I have to say they do sound extraordinary. So I'm going to get to work mounting this stuff and uh, get this guy ready for soldering. Okay. Uh, off camera there, I did some sizing, measuring with putting the potentiometer on to see how far down I'd need to put these nuts on. What I found was it'll be just about perfect if I put this bottom nut all the way down. Because it has a washer that goes on top. that and then goes on here with another washer on top like so all right like that Um, thinking about how I'm going to uh, position these to go with the wiring. And while I do that, I'm going to grab myself a wrench to tighten these up. Okay, I've got my configuration here. 
how I want to point these. Uh, I don't want to turn this one this way because it's too close to the edge. So I'm going to face it this direction. This one I want to have facing a little bit more toward the uh, switch, but yet also accessible to the other pot. So I'm just going to tighten these and here by, by hand. But they are nice and tight nonetheless. Nonetheless. Now, five way switch. It's going to go right in here. I did take the plastic coating off of the pick guard on the outside too. Uh, I know a lot of guys don't do that till they're uh, a little more ready to finish up. All right, I'm having a problem here getting this screw started. All right, let's try this again. I've had ample amounts of frustration with this whole project. So lately when something gets under my skin, I find it's easier just to turn off the video and Take a second to chill a little bit. All right. Which is a technique I'm having to do more and more here. screw that does not want to go in. Okay, be right back. Okay, here's a piece of sage advice. Working on a project like this with little parts, test fit everything first with your screws. Because Sometimes you're going to run into situations like I just ran into where they did not want to go in. Took them out, threaded them back in, they were fine. Tried to do it on the pick guard, didn't want to go. So, uh, you work with stuff like this, prepare for irritations because they are going to arise. All right, so we've got our switch in, got our pots in, boy they're noisy. I expected so much more from these, they're supposed to be so fantastic and the best and uh, quite annoyed with the whole process I went through to buy them and they're noisy. Pots, usually I use uh, use different pots than these but these have a reputation of being really good so I figured I'd try them out uh, we'll see when we get more toward the uh, sound then nice switch though it's a bitch to put on but it's a nice switch all right next comes pickups I have to get these screws prepared. All right. I got the first pickup on. Here's another piece of advice I learned from experience. 
drive your screws in first put your spacers on then put your pickups in save yourself a lot of frustration and of course once you get these on here you can set them to whatever you want them at and make adjustments down the line but you need to get them on there first I like to bring that a little bit, not too much. Okay, I'm gonna get the bridge in the middle on. One more, and pick up. Sometimes you have to pinch this pretty tight, so this is catching. Just kind of push the pick up away, back the screw out. There we go. Alright, here we go. There we go. We need some knobs and wait. What's that? I forgot about this big five eighths inch hole. What in the world are we gonna put in there? All right, maybe I'll have something positive come out of this night anyway. Our secret ingredient is we're going to have one master volume, one master tone, and one kill switch. So, I'm not exactly sure where this guess is supposed to go. But I'm guessing it's probably around the top. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm guessing where I go. Go to the top. Yeah, I guess that's probably well. That's where it's going. Because you know what? I've had about enough of fooling around with this thing for one night. Yeah, there we go. Kill switch. Master volume, master tone, master kill switch. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for bearing with me on this excruciatingly difficult journey to build this guitar. Next video is going to be putting shielding tape inside the body, remounting the bridge with the ground wire attached, and then getting this sucker wired up. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.